If preparation is our key to embracing this dispensation and our future with faith, how can we best prepare? For decades, the Lord's prophets have urged us to store food, water, and financial reserves for a time of need. The current pandemic has reinforced the wisdom of that counsel. I urge you to take steps to be temporally prepared. But I am even more concerned about your spiritual and emotional preparation. As disciples of the Savior, we are commanded to prepare every needful thing and establish a house, even a house of prayer, a house of fasting, a house of faith, a house of learning, a house of glory, a house of order, a house of God. We also are promised that if ye are prepared, ye shall not fear, and that ye might escape the power of the enemy and be gathered unto me a righteous people without spot and blameless. Additional aspects of a spiritual foundation for temporal preparedness includes acting in wisdom and order, which implies a gradual buildup of food storage and savings over time, as well as embracing small and simple means, which is a demonstration of faith that the Lord will magnify our small but consistent efforts. Some church members opine that emergency plans and supplies, food storage, and 72-hour kits must not be important anymore because the brethren have not spoken recently and extensively about these and related topics in general conference. But repeated admonitions to prepare have been proclaimed by leaders of the church for decades. The consistency of prophetic counsel over time creates a powerful concert of clarity and a warning volume far louder than solo performances can ever produce. As we seek to become temporally prepared, we can face the trials of life with increased confidence, peace in our hearts, and like Joseph in Egypt, we will be able to say, even in stressful circumstances, there was bread. Just as challenging times reveal inadequacies in a temporal preparedness, so too the maladies of spiritual casualness and complacency inflict their most detrimental effects during difficult times. We learn, for example, in the parable of the ten virgins that procrastinating preparation leads to unsuccessful proving. Recall how the five foolish virgins failed to prepare appropriately for the examination given to them on the day of the bridegroom's coming. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us in you. But go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Afterward came also the other virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, ye know me not. At least on this exam, the five foolish virgins proved themselves to be hearers only and not doers of the word. Even when things went well, Captain Merle and I continued to prepare his people. He never stopped. He never became complacent. The adversary never stops attacking, so we can never stop preparing. The more self-reliant we are, temporally, emotionally, and spiritually, the more prepared we are to thwart Satan's relentless assaults.